What's up everyone, I'm Dead Inside, and today I wanted to reveal my e-commerce business, how I started it, how I almost lost it all, and the one tweet from a mysterious Russian that led to me and members across the platform to make millions of dollars. So the e-commerce website that I started is tracktrain.com. Tracktrain.com is a website for music producers to upload and sell their instrumentals, AKA beats. If you don't know what beats are, that's like the background music that you hear behind a rapper or singer. So an artist or company can go to Tracktrain buy instrumentals and music producers who make beats can upload and sell their instrumentals on TrackTrain for free. Artists like Megan Thee Stallion and Joyner Lucas have used TrackTrain to buy beats. Companies like OVO, Adidas, and Island Records have discovered producers on TrackTrain as well as many others. So here's the million dollar question. How did I bring hundreds of thousands of people to my website for free without spending any money on advertising? So here's how it started. I began as a music producer making and uploading beats to YouTube, titling them as type beats because I noticed that this worked like magic in YouTube's algorithm in regards to getting exposure. By the way, this is the exact same way that I got 100,000 views on my first YouTube video on my other Dead Inside channel, identifying the momentum and capitalizing. But back to how I grew my business for free, I was selling beats on this outdated website to where I would have to manually send buyers each beat. But I wanted to create a website where when someone buys a beat, it would automatically send buyers each beat. But I had no idea how hard it would be to find a web developer that I could re afford. So before Traction made millions, I scraped together $6,000 in the span of two years, getting ready to pay this freelance web developer to create TrackTrain. But in those two years, I knew exactly how I would bring people to TrackTrain for free. I was working with other producers who had cracked YouTube's algorithm like me. So finally in 2013, when TrackTrain is launched, I have all of these smart producers from YouTube that I got cool with and get them to upload beats on my website because it's in the producer's best interest to promote their TrackTrain store on their YouTube vids. But here's what lit TrackTrain on fire. Lil Peep starts blowing up. X starts blowing up. All of these underground rappers from SoundCloud start getting bigger and bigger. And the majority of these buzzing rappers go to beat makers are selling beats on track train so this snowball effect starts to occur but it's for the worse the more traffic i had the more server fees i had the more bugs i had i didn't think about putting a cap off on how many beats producers could upload so producers are uploading hundreds and hundreds of beats my server fees are going through the roof so i had to renovate the website to offer additional features to help pay the fees of running the website here are where the criminals enter this story i find what seemed to be the best most expensive web development team in Texas, let's call them the Cowgirls, to create Track Train 2.0, the one with all these new features. I wanted producers to see more stats, have more ways to advertise, see less bugs, and so on. The Cowgirls say they'll finish my website for $20,000 in one year. I tell them exactly what I need. They give me a contract. I sign it. The more months that go by on Track Train, the more complaints we get, the higher my bills go, but the traffic isn't slowing down. The more beats that a producer sells, the more beats the producer wants to upload, the more beats that there are, the more the chances of an artist wanting to buy. It was almost like the fall of Rome. We were growing faster than we could keep up with. But in the back of my mind are those cowgirls working on Track Train 2.0. Now 10 months go by and I finally get a phone call from the cowgirls. They tell me they can't get the website done for another five months and I need to pay them an extra $5,000 because what I wanted was out of scope. I remind them about the contract. They say they can't do it. They can't refund me. So I get a lawyer and sue them. All of that time spent waiting for them to finish was wasted while track train server fees are just going higher and higher and higher. More and more people are complaining about the bugs and errors occurring all across the site from the huge amounts of traffic. Just when I felt like things couldn't get any worse, the worst possible thing that could have happened to track train happens. Somebody hacks into our system and deletes the whole website. The freelance developer who I was paying over the years to run the day-to-day -day operations, we'll call him Simple Jack, last backed up the website six months prior to the hack. So even if I recovered the website, I lost six months worth of users and six months worth of beats uploaded. So here's the biggest part of the story. Simple Jack uploads the track train that's missing the six months worth of data back online, but Simple Jack did something to where no one can upload beats and he doesn't know how to fix it. It's about this time where I'm feeling beyond sad because even if we did bring back Track Train, we weren't gonna get our reputation back, or at least that's what I thought. So I post a tweet from the Track Train Twitter saying, guys, somebody hacked the website and deleted everything. That tweet was viewed by around 60,000 people and it's around this time where I get hundreds of producers from the website that are also web developers trying to help. I'm so overwhelmed 
and still shell shock from what just happened i don't know who to trust was it the cowgirls <laughs> because i'm going into a legal battle with them was it a competitor who felt threatened i was just frozen until i had a moment of divine intervention so simple jack has track train up but no one can upload beats it's at this time to where i received my first lifeline from the mysterious Russian. I met my computer on PayPal refunding advertisers when I get a tweet. The tweet was from a Russian user by the name of Cut Off Your Mind, another producer on Traction who is reaching out offering a way to help. He tweets me saying that the reason no one can upload is because there is a 413 code on track upload. I'm not a web developer, so I don't know what that means, but very soon after, Simple Jack texts me saying the same thing. So with the timing of me getting Simple Jack's text and reading the Russian's tweet, I took that as a sign. Plus it gave me a lot of confidence in this Russian guy. So I DM'd Cut Off Your Mind and I said, hey man, I have a list of things that I need to get done. Can you do it for me? He says yes, but I know that the problem is the only way he can get this done is if I give him the keys and passwords to everything. He could have easily seized the website and that would be the end of the story. But not only did he complete these tasks extremely fast, he charged me very little. So as the weeks were going by and he was doing more and more tasks, I was so grateful that I reached out to him again and I just said, hey man, you wanna just be my partner on this website, let's split everything 50-50. I was in the middle of a lawsuit, I was paying my lawyer over $2,000 a month, my server fees were surging, and I still needed to get Track Train 2.0 finished. A huge part of my identity was this website because I didn't party and go out on the weekends, I didn't go to college, I didn't get a regular job, I took a huge risk while me and my wife were on food stamps and she was pregnant in grad school. I thought I lost 10 years of my life because that was the amount of time I spent making music and building up this community on Track Train. I was regretting all the time I spent on this business, but no matter how contaminated I might have been from my past and my current situation, I just kept pushing. And this may be a stupid part of the story, but it's always meant a lot to me. Around the same time my business was hacked and I was going through that lawsuit, I remember telling my wife, man, I don't even want to go to the gym today. And she said, just don't go. And I said, no, I'm still going to be the same person that I've been because I know nothing in this world will take the place of persistence. If it was easy, everyone would do it. But I hope that I can continue to have that outlook because I ended up winning that lawsuit, getting all my money back, getting Track Train 2.0 finished, going from just me running Track Train to now having a team of 13 employees thanks to my new mysterious Russian friend. But I just wanted to say again, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Thanks for watching guys and keep pushing.